Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Piranha 3 Double D Movie Thoughts I am not going to spend too much time dismantling the logic of the film. I appreciate that it's meant to be stupid, but with even within the framework and the sort of internal logic of the film, I just can't quite ignore how the... when they meet Christopher Lloyd, excuse me, he proves to them quite conclusively that these fish can go through metal and then they go check out a grate. It appears to be intact and they thus decide that, okay, the piranhas haven't gotten You've just seen them go through metal, and now you're thinking that a metal grate will... Because obviously, it's like those two parts were written by different script writers, and they didn't compare or something. Or one writer with a serious case of ADHD. Basically, I get it. The thing of, you know, oh, they can go through metal now, is supposed to be, you know, so that we won't ask too many questions when they start going up through the, uh, I don't know, the drain, whatever it's called, in, in the pools, you know, at the water park, basically. Uh, I don't know if the ending was a serious grab for, you know, a, a serious bit of sequel baiting. Honestly, they should have just followed up on the first movies sequel baiting, although I can appreciate that that might be a little difficult to do, I guess, or difficult to make work for a full movie. Anyway, yeah, I'm not going to give away what it is. <sighs> yeah, so, anyway, walking piranhas, it just... And, and then, you know, it, it jumps because, yeah, we've seen them jump all throughout these two movies, you know, that's really not, not surprising. I'm not sure there's an awful lot else. I did think that the sort of, I don't know, the, the duality of the film's depiction of sex and nudity was a bit, I don't know, adolescent. It was, it was immature. I mean, I'm not saying there was like too much sex or something. I, I, I went to the movie for sex. I, you know, that was what I expected out of it. That was like what I expected out of the first one. The first one actually, you know, pretty well says, well, there was a pretty decent amount of you know, sex, hot chicks, and nudity in this, but what I'm saying is the movie very clearly, like, had this, you know, moralizing thing to it as well. I mean, one thing is that the two quote-unquote bad guys die painfully, painfully, quickly, actually. Anyway, I can appreciate that Chet was, you know, an asshole at the end of the film when he backs over the eight-year-old girl who just lost her mother and when he's like insisting that it wasn't his fault. But before that point, he seemed to just be kind of dumb and if that's a crime, then everybody in this movie should have, you know, gotten their head chopped off like that. 
I do like that it was his sleaziness that got him killed. Anyway, and yeah, and the, and the other guy also didn't really seem to be that much of a. And I really didn't buy how he was suddenly a you know complete wimp. That just came completely out of nowhere. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, yes, you know you have these. You know, you have the, the black girl who's like praying because ooh, we're about to have sex and we're not married yet. And then, you know, they die because they were about to have sex and they aren't married yet. You know, it just... And then, you know, you have that other chick who's, you know, and the guy who has sex with her and... Uh, yeah, they don't end up too well. You know, it just, it's, it's indulging in this desire to have a lot of nudity and sex, and then at the same time, it's, you know, wagging a finger. I don't know, I suppose that is typical for this kind of, you know, also was in the 80s, you know, you'd have, you know, at least some nudity in the slasher film, but then you'd also have everyone who had sex or did drugs or drank when they were underage, you know, they'd also get killed. Anyway. And yes, it did kind of bother me that the, the, the implication that, that there was this sex worker who was a a lifeguard, apparently a certified lifeguard, at least Chet said so. And then, you know, when she's, you know, told there's an actual emergency, you know, at first she just ignores it, and then a little after she turns out to be useless. I don't know, I just, yeah, I don't really care for the implication that because a woman makes a living off sex that she's necessarily, like, stupid or useless. It's, yeah. I suppose that's it. Yeah, just briefly comment on the the what's it called? The guy whose dick gets yeah. You know, in the first one. For one thing, they did it much better, and it was actually kind of funny, and in this one, and the fact that, just that they're even doing it again, yeah, just lazy. Yeah, I guess that's it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.